Hey guys, and welcome to tonight's breakdown. We're going to be covering Bad Batch episode nine. Now, first off, I got to say this episode was much more of a side mission compared to last week's two episode bangers with Rex and Palpatine making beautiful appearances. However, tonight's episode did focus more on character development of both Omega and mainly Tech. The two had a spat and they resolved it with some good life lessons to the much younger crowd, well, heck, all of us watching the show. First off, the music was awesome this episode, definitely some Last of Us vibes, and I gotta say the crew also feels really weird and uneven without Echo now as we've been so used to him since the Clone Wars when we met the Bad Batch in Season 7. Especially without Crosshair there, it all just feels like a very small knit crew, which is cozy and nice, but at the same time a little uneven and we gotta get used to it. As they land on a deserted looking planet, they were sent here on a mission from Sid to extract some Ipsium from her mine. While they are doing so, their ship actually gets stolen by what seems to be, I think a human, but we get to see their skin under their helmet just at the neckline a little bit being visible. Now many in chat thought this could be Hondo, but I think it's actually someone else. And in fact, I think this was a hired job by Sid. I think Sid actually set them up, but more on that another time. As they figure out what their next move will be, they realize they're stranded on the planet and figure their only move is to work their way to the nearest town, which is 40 clicks south of their current location. So they start moving. The team looks much more lopsided without Echo. It just doesn't feel balanced through the whole show. I guess I just miss Echo and I didn't realize how much I missed him. As they walk through a valley of rock cliffs, we get a scene from The Lion King where a stampede comes running through and they reach up a rock limb to safety. Now, as the stampede clears, they realize why they were running, and it was actually because of a dark storm approaching faster and faster as the crew realize what the real danger actually was. They run very fast into a cave opening eventually as the Ipsium slips out and explodes onto the side of the mountain, trapping them in. Now, Ipsium, if you didn't know, in its raw state is very explosive. So they're stuck inside and they get into a bit of an argument. Omega argues about the ship being found again, basically saying it's their home and worrying that nobody really cares about it, where the crew tell her that it's just a ship and it can be replaced. She has an absolute meltdown and is sad about how they lost Echo and now they're home, the Marauder. So Tech finally asks her what we've all been thinking, what is her issue? She gets very sad and walks away into a part of the cave where she finds some very super concentrated form of Ipsium, which Sid wanted. So she begins to harvest it on her own when she notices the entire part of the wall is actually entwined with it and it's very explosive. So she is careful to extract it. Tech is told by the other two Hunter and Wrecker to go and make amends with her. So he does and this is a nice developmental scene for him as he doesn't treat the situation so technically and without emotion. And I think that's one of the main things we can take away from this episode is that Tech is becoming much more human in a sense and we learn why he is the way he is. So they work together and extract as much Ipsium as possible, filling all their vials, when Omega finally reaches a little too far off of the ledge and falls deep into the abyss, as Tech, without hesitation, mind you, jumps after her. And this is another character moment, character building moment for Tech, as he just doesn't hesitate, he doesn't calculate the scenario, what could be down there, what could happen, he just leaps and jumps head first. Well, feet first into what he doesn't know is actually there. It could be cliffs, it could be rocks, it could be water, it could be lava for all he knows, it could be more Ipsium. Luckily they fall into a large body of water that is running downstream. Tech saves her from the current and they both make it to shore. As Hunter and Wrecker try to meet them, it gives us good time for Tech and Omega to talk. Omega is upset that everything is changing and Tech informs her that change is a part of life. He says that you have to adapt and move on. That's what soldiers do. She says we're more than that, we're family. Tech responds and says, yes, we are. He has a moment and stares off, and I think he's finally becoming much more human. You know, I, I believe one of the moments of this was him jumping right away after her without evaluating the situation and realizing that there's, you know, perhaps a low percentage of a chance of him surviving that jump, but rather his care for her overrode literally the reason he's called Tech and goes in to save her. So I think he's finally understanding that he can't answer everything so technically like a machine without any human emotion. He is very much like a computer. He says he processes moments and thoughts differently, but it doesn't mean that he feels things any less than anyone else. 
This was a really nice way of putting it that he's just different than the average person with so many emotions, whereas he doesn't really show those emotions, but it doesn't mean that he isn't dealing with the same feelings. He's much more introverted and deals with things more rationally without emotion clouding his judgments. He's much more emotionally detached, but that's not without having the same feelings as Omega. He's just more mature and hardened by life in his way of dealing with things. And I think that happens to a lot of us as we age. I think this was a great life lesson here where Omega is sulking about what can't be changed and he tells her that it's okay to be sad but we must move on and carry on with life as that's really the only option that we have. You know, get yourself out of the hole instead of just laying in it sulking because that just won't be good for anybody at the end of the day. They use the Ipsium to blast their way out of the mountain and make their way to the deserted town's airway station. Tech makes the shot. And he does this over Wrecker's questioning of why he can't do it. So when he shoots the Ipsium, it's actually him who's doing it instead of Hunter or Wrecker or even Omega. He responds by saying the shot must be precise, otherwise they'll be caved in. So we also know that Wrecker is either a bad shot, which he probably is, or Tech is the closest thing that they have to Crosshair. Now Hunter didn't take the shot and neither did Omega. So I think when it comes to calculating and precision shots, Tech could be leading the race there with his brothers, of course not compared to Crosshair, which is literally his superpower. They call Sid and ask her to pick them up once they make it to the deserted town, or should I say space station. Sid says no, not her problem. She huffs and puffs and says, okay, give me a few days to figure it out. And they say that they don't have enough food to last them this long as she hangs up on them. Sid is garbage. I never liked her as a character and I think that they wrote her this way with this kind of inkling where she's just this two-faced nasty person who has some nefarious plans going on behind the scenes and really just uses people to get ahead until she doesn't need them anymore. That could be the case or we could be jumping the gun and I say we by all of us in chat last night and she could be held ransom by the Empire. Maybe she's trying to keep them away to save them. But I don't really think so. Now, I think she's betraying them twice in this episode, just as her nemesis told them in that pod racing episode. Not pod racing, but really the racing episode. So I think she sent a thief there to grab the Marauder and steal it from them, and then again by denying them a ride when they're stranded with a massive storm coming. I mean, what are the odds that some dude comes in on a speeder, spe steals their ship in the precise hidden spot that they have it on a planet that looks completely deserted with a massive terrifying storm headed near them? The episode wasn't as moving as perhaps last week, for sure, but it did build on the Bad Batch's dynamic and primarily showing us that Tech is quite a capable member of the team, especially now that he's working on his people skills with Omega and allowing us to understand how he is so different and how he processes things differently, but that doesn't necessarily mean that he doesn't feel the same emotions and feelings that everyone else does who may be so vocal about it. And I really connect with that because I am like that, I think, too. And I know a lot of you watching are as well, which is great. We're not all clones. Now, I think next week, perhaps Sid will eventually come pick them up or they'll get off the planet somehow and they'll have a bone to pick with her. But they'll realize that she's actually a scummy friend and not really a friend at all. And they won't trust her or work with her anymore. Or, on the other hand, maybe she's in trouble with the Empire or the Huts. And this could be the start of the real story here of the Bad Batch. Maybe she's in debt and needed to sell their ship, setting them up so that she can get paid. Maybe for a bigger cause. So she's either protecting them or she has just left them in the dust and got what she wanted out of them. Not too sure what to believe as the ship probably is pretty expensive on its own, but I guess we'll see you next week. Let me know if there's some other topics you'd like me to cover from this episode. I have a few in mind that I'd like to go over with you guys in separate videos. Make sure to check out today's double upload, and I will see you all in the next episode of Star Wars Theory. Until then, my fellow Jedi and Sith friends, remember, the Force will be with you always. Always.